Alrighty guys, welcome back to Adventure Radio. So uh, this week we've got Ben Berger on for you guys. So Ben is a CrossFit Games level coach. He coached. Uh, he actually coached the winners of the men and women's side last year. Matt Fraser, Katrin David's daughter, he's coached five Games athletes that have gone on to win the Games. He's coached a Games winning team. He owns CrossFit New England and, uh, and helps build better boxes around the world with his Built by Bergeron program. Hey, um, did, you ever, did you ever think his name was Bergeron? Nah. You always knew it was Bergeron? Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. um, nah, nah. Uh, so this one's good though, guys. Ben was a um, really good bloke and talked about uh, kind of how to find um, balance in your life and when to resort to fuck the balance. Let's try and yep. win the CrossFit Games. That was what I, what I liked of it most. What about you, Tommy? Yeah, I actually liked the exact same thing. I thought it was really interesting. I asked a specific question about that in the show, as you properly remember Bilbo Baggins, and um, he responded with the whole, yeah, fuck the balance, and um, if you want something, you've got to sacrifice and then push hard and, you know, do it, do whatever you can to get it. It was good, really good. He had a, he had a mindset that... I wasn't surprised he would have, but I was very happy to hear that he did. In what regard? Uh, well, just, I mean, he's a bloody successful coach. Mm-hmm. He's a bloody successful entrepreneur. He and is. He's, and he's moved into a realm of his life that he's super passionate about. And he's happy to just give up things because he loves it so much. And mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know? No, he's great. So um, this show, guys, is uh, brought to you by True Pride. True Pride are a wealth creation service who work with ambitious individuals and families looking to take control, worry less, and get ahead. If you're looking for a way to take control, worry less, and get ahead when it comes to your money, True Pride is a wealth coaching business that provides you all the tools you need to fast track this. So you will. Uh, so basically, guys, what um, True Pride are doing for me and Tommy is they've set us up with a program called CashFit, which works on your budget, and uh, and Craig. <laughs> Uh, at the head of, at the head of um, True Pride, what his goal is is to smash your budget, figure out where you can make savings, and then he averages. What did he say? One hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars? Yeah, a week? I think it was about one hundred and fifty dollars a week in savings per person. Yeah, so he averages uh, one hundred and fifty dollars per week in savings. So that's six hundred dollars. So his program, I think, costs ninety seven dollars a week. We're getting it for free because uh, he's the sponsor of the show, and we're the uh, the big dogs. We're the big dogs. <laughs> but um, how's it going for you, Tommy? Mate. It's going well. Yeah, I uh, I owe a fair few people money, including the mafia, <laughs> and uh, it, it, he's helped me. So the mafia. You owe right Ben on some money, don't yeah, you? I do. I, I do owe him, uh, Ben some some money for uh, that one faithful night in uh, in Vegas. <laughs> Just a couple of lines, and uh, yeah, we got excited. The pants were off. <laughs> nah, um, nah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Craig Bigelow, Deuce Bigelow, or, or Juicy, as I call it. Anyway, back to yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> nah, he's um he's really really good. It's um the the program sets up. All the all the parts of expenses in your life, and it just it for me. I don't know about you, but it simplified a lot of things for mm. me. You know, I thought my money was just going to all different places, and he um he showed me where exactly what it was. Puts and, it in a screen in front of you too that you yeah. can look at and say. So it'll it'll allocate time for uh for play. Uh, sorry, money for play, money for business, money yep. for uh, savings, and and you can kind of every item is uh, itemized in your feed come from your banks, mm. and then from then on it just goes into each category. You can see whether you're over budget, whether you're under budget, and mm. it's per- perfect for people just trying to save for a holiday. Um, so that's six hundred bucks a month to save for a holiday without changing anything in your life apart from just tweaking your budget, yep. tweaking the little things. Um, anyway, guys, so True Pride. If you want to check it out for yourself, head to www.truepride.com.au forward slash advf. You'll get a joining fee of two hundred ninety-seven dollars waived. Fuck the joining fee. Yep. <laughs> and uh, if you book a call via the website via our link, um, check it out, guys. And we're also brought to you by Carve. So Carve is a company that specialises in anything from digital uh, building of apps, designing logos, automating your business, down to setting up your next event. Carve is a partner to be when you want to have more time to focus on the things that you love and scale your business. So. What Carve is, Carve is, um, Carve is the company that I get my VAs from. So I have two assistants over in the Philippines. One, uh, one is my assistant for AdventureFit and the other, Alvin, runs, um, runs AdventureFit Radio's back end, mm. promote, produces all their shows, runs most of the social media and stuff. I see it all. Um, Alvin puts the posts out. So He's a real uh, 
dark knight, isn't he? He's a real go getter. Yeah, he's a real go getter. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's. I sent the boys over some gear during the week. <laughs> what looking, sort of gear? Looking fresh. Um, sent him mescaline. Yep. Um, MDMA. Yep. Good. Um, a little bit of um, heroin. Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> no, sent him over. Sent him over some. Um, <laughs> sent, him, sent, him over, <laughs> sent him over some teas and uh, some hats and stuff. So the guys over in Carb for me, guys. How it works is, I have a, a, a home base called Trello, which is a shared workspace. We have all of our lists. Me and Tommy use this for the back end of Adventure Radio. So Adventure Radio, for example, we, uh, we have lists of potential guests, guests we've contacted, guests that are in discussion, and then they go into our calendar, all of our spreadsheets. So it's all in one place and we can work remotely. So this is how it works for my VAs in the Philippines. I'm in the process right now of getting my third uh, VA up and running and... Um, and that'll be great. These guys, uh, basically, uh, they get paid well in in um, Filipino pesos, I believe it is. But it's very, very cost effective. I think it's like nine dollars an hour Australian, or six or seven dollars US per hour for for the uh, for the service. And it basically gets time back in your life. I've got my life back through using these guys. Really, that's eighty hours a week of work that You're I not doing. Well, I couldn't have been yep. doing. You know, I couldn't have yep. been doing that much work. So. 80 hours and uh, it doesn't really cost me all that much and it's just an awesome service. So if you guys want to get 10 free hours on any project, head to www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF. If you want uh, any information about it too, guys, you can email me at doc at adventurefittravel.com. Um, no dick pics, thanks. But, um, <laughs> some, some, some. <laughs> so also, we are brought to you by Adventure Fit Travel. Adventure Fit Travel is my company. It's a, uh, an adventure travel company for the fitness community. We've just released a Mexico trip, guys. Mexico with Jared Fleming, American national champion weightlifter. We're heading through Playa del Carmen and Tulum, checking out the new seven wonders of the world in Chichen Itza, um, Tulum ruins. We're going diving in cenotes, stand-up paddleboarding on the Caribbean. Um, uh, we got a workshop with Jared, like I said, heaps of training, just heaps of cool stuff, hanging out on the beach, just playing at Mexico style. So uh, that's all ready to go on the website. Head to www.adventurefittravel.com and uh, you'll check that out. I like it. Here's the show. All righty. Here we are, guys, with uh, Ben Bergeron. Uh, CrossFit Games superstar coach and affiliate owner from uh, CrossFit New England. Before we, uh, Tommy is with me as always on my left. But before we, am. before we throw to Tommy and before we throw to Ben, we're just going to start off Ben with uh, Tommy's tribute. <laughs> I just love the fact for everyone at home at six thirty in the morning uh, in Melbourne, which is not that bad. But Bill just said before we throw to Tommy and before we throw to Ben, we're going to throw to Tommy. <laughs> oh, that's good. Alrighty, Benny. Welcome to the show, my friend. I've got a uh, a little tribute prepared for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Hopefully, hope th- I really hope that my uh, my singing is on point here because uh, my voice doesn't feel fantastic here. All right, here we go. Well, his name is Ben. He's the Bergeron. He's got some great gyms to his name. New England puts them all to shame But I reckon Bergeron Should open CrossFit Lebanon <laughs> Beautiful, the rhyme and reason And it's the rhyme and season Oh, and by the way I forgot to say He's the most successful coach And I don't mean to boast But I'm happy where the host of this awesome show he's on. Yeah. Welcome, Benny. That is, that's the highlight of my coaching career right <laughs> yes. there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Uh, there you go. I there's, had no idea what to expect too. and that exceeded all my expectations. <laughs> I'm slightly uh, hard on the pants right now. <laughs> you, can, uh, you can use the name CrossFit Lebanon too for your next, yeah. uh, your next gym. No, right? It doesn't, right, doesn't have to be in Adventure Lebanon. Radio, copyright. <laughs> A million dollars of ideas. You never know where you're going to get them from. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hey, uh, welcome to the show, Ben. And, I'm uh, super happy to be here, guys, even though it's 6.30 in the morning there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Ben, and, um, and what got you into CrossFit and, uh, and coaching? Sure. So um, I found CrossFit uh, in 2006, 2007. At the time, I was a personal trainer 
um, got into personal training because I wanted to do something more with my life. At the time, I was um, doing finance in Boston and kind of doing the suit and tie thing. And um, 9-11, the attacks on you know the World Trade Center and the terror attacks happened, and I, I quit my job. I moved out to the mountains to try to figure out my life, and I realized I wanted to do something more than just kind of push buttons on a computer and shuffle money around. Mm-hmm. And came back to this kind of realization that I love fitness and love want to change people's lives. So started doing the personal training thing. And through that, kind of fell into CrossFit and kind of like the way everybody did back then, just found the website somehow. Started with my members, started with my um, started with my clients and started with myself and saw obviously the incredible results that everybody sees that does CrossFit and kind of fell in love with it. You know, you fast forward um, about nine years and I own uh, um, I own CrossFit New England and a partial owner of two other affiliates. And I've been a, a CrossFit Games coach, um, kind of what... I think the reason I'm on this this podcast because mm-hmm. of that, and uh, had to had some success, particularly this uh, this past year. Over the last my course of my career, I've I've been lucky enough to coach uh, five different CrossFit Games champions, and uh, had two individuals this year. It's a great so, record, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was, it's um, it's been a an amazing experience. It's one of those things that I feel incredibly lucky to wake up every day and, you know, be passionate about what I'm doing. And I think, you know, especially considering, you know, my previous life, I was not passionate about what I was doing. So mm, for sure, this is a, uh, it's, it's a amazing experience and amazing opportunity. And I, I don't take it for granted for one second. Mm, that's great. That's a great, uh, great track record that you've had with your coaching. So what about um, when you actually took the plunge to become a, an affiliate owner? Were you always that way inclined to to bite the bullet and, and dive headfirst into things or did it take, was there a bit of apprehension there with it being a new career? And, and um, I'm sure that's something that's out there for a lot of people in their minds. They want to start becoming an affiliate, but a lot of people are obviously um, very risk averse and then they won't, they won't go ahead and, and do what you've done, which has obviously changed, uh, changed and shaped your life. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not risk averse. So that's, yeah. Uh, that's probably the part of it. I'm, I'm kind of entrepreneurial minded. I, I now have my hand in about six different businesses. Um, and I've been kind of doing that ever since I was a, a kid. I, you know, I had a paper route when I was nine and then I started running uh, baseball camps when I was 13. So mm, I've cool. kind of always been kind of like this, like I would like to do businessy stuff. Um, but not at the higher level business stuff, not like finance and insurance and that sort of thing. I like the the dealing with people and that thing. So, you know, I, I can't tell people if it's the right move for them to go and open up an affiliate because it's a decision they have to make on their own. Mm-hmm. It is a risky proposition. It's not what most people think. It's It looks really simple and easy to, to be able to kind of get yourself profitable on paper. You know, you have X number of coaches, you pay this in the rent, and you probably have to have a little extra for pay some utilities and insurance. And you have this many members and you turn a profit. But there's a lot more to it than that. And I think that people probably don't go into this thing with eyes wide open. They go into a little bit, um, you know, thinking that this is a little bit of a simpler business than it is. Mm. I don't want to say that opening it for the, the right reasons is the wrong reason. You should go into this because you love fitness and you love people and you want to change people's lives. Absolutely. Like that's, the driving factor, then you're you're ahead of the ball game. You're ahead of the people that are open up Globo gyms, but yes. there is an element to managing people and leading. And I think that that more so than the business side of things, it's the people that um, that have the ability to manage and lead are the people, and also can kind of recognize and coach coaches, not just coach their members, but coach coaches are the ones that are going to be successful. And probably if you're one of those people and you're debating whether you should open an affiliate. If you kind of fit those categories, I think that you're you're probably a good candidate. Right. And is that just um, when that transfers over to the, the actual dollars and cents, is that just because um, you want to have the – obviously, coaching is the foundation part of your, uh, of your gym. That's the most important part for client retention and keeping everybody happy word of mouth. Is that the basic tenant behind that or, or um, what's, what's the reasoning there? Yeah, so the, the – um, my kind of like philosophy is that everything we do stems upon, upon the community that we're creating and you want to have the right feel, vibe and when people come into the gym, they should feel like they're getting the best hour of their day. It should be incredibly safe and supportive, encouraging um, environment. 
from there, sure. the next thing is, is your coaches and development of your coaching staff and making sure that they are all kind of humble and hungry and looking, you know, pursue the highest level of coaching credential they possibly can slash become the best pros at what they're doing. If you do that, the kind of like the member retention, the marketing, and all that stuff, it essentially kind of takes care of itself. You know, I don't want to say that that's the end of it, but that for sure is the most important part of running a successful gym. It's developing the community, which starts off with leadership, and then developing the coaches, which starts with leadership. So I think that the most underrated aspect of, of probably most businesses is leadership. You know, there's a lot of businesses that are struggling in, in tough um, – you know, there's, there's stories of a lot of struggling businesses in struggling industries that get a strong leader and they fliply, t- completely turn the business around. Yeah. It's, it's not the product. It's not the, it's not the industry. It's the team. And the team is all uh, an extension of the leadership in place. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. I think most of my uh, affiliate friends have, uh, have pretty much come to that crossroad that you spoke about where um, – where you alluded to where they've set up a gym and they're um, having a really good time day to day, but it starts to wear them down. And then most of them have gone outside and found somebody like yourself that runs the seminars to build a better box, really, to, to actually think of it in, a, uh, in business sense rather than as a, as a passion and try and um, actually get some, get some money coming through the bank accounts. How many people, um, well, let me rephrase this, how rewarding f- for you is it, in comparison to coaching day-to-day clients, getting someone their first pull-up, getting someone their first um, or a PB on their snatch, uh, how how rewarding is it to have someone come through the doors and totally change their life and fix their gym? Yeah, so that's um, it's incredibly rewarding. It's a reason. It's one of the main motivating factors for why I do the uh, the kind of business development side of stuff that I do. It's CrossFit's given me so much. It's given me a an ability to, you know, be incredibly passionate about my every single day. I look forward to Mondays, you know, it's, so I want to do everything I can to help push this forward. And I'm very much of the mindset that as we get better and the affiliates get better, they don't take a bigger piece of the pie from me. What we're doing is we're making a bigger pie. Yeah. So we need to, we need to become better as a community. And as if every gym, if every gym just improves by CrossFit gym improves by 10, 15% over the next three years, this CrossFit thing that we're all a part of will, it's going to be in, insane mm. how awesome it is for all of us. So I'm just kind of trying to do my part of kind of creating, giving some people some direction, not because I'm doing things you know the best way possible, but because I've learned a lot of mis- from my mistakes over the last nine years. I'm running my business very, very differently now than I was even a year ago, yeah. never mind nine years ago. And I'm sure that in two or three years from now, I'm going to look back at 2016 and be like, I can't believe we were just doing that. It's all about this kind of relentless pursuit of excellence, knowing that excellence is not perfection. And if you're chasing perfection, you're going to be really discouraged on a day-to-day level because perfection does not exist. For sure. What we're trying to do is not become a perfect gym. We know we have flaws and we're very, very upfront and, you know, obvious and vulnerable and willing to expose them. It's, uh, it's really truly about trying to, trying to get better every, every hour of every day. It's like we're doing that. And if I can kind of show people how to do that, it's incredibly rewarding to get those stories of people like, you know, coming back from the seminars, people have done it and, um, the immersion programs that we do and knowing that, you're not just affecting that one person in your gym, which is phenomenal. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. But you're affecting essentially the 150 members to 300 members that this other affiliate owner is having. Mm. It's, I, I, my goal is the reason I did this is started this whole thing in this fitness pursuit is because of 9-11. It's because of what's going on. I, my goal is to change the world. And mm-hmm. I try and do it one athlete, one workout at a time. Yep. But if I can, if I can you know, help push – another affiliate owner towards excellence. Well, I'm not just doing that by one athlete at a time. I'm infecting all of their members. So it's hundreds of athletes at a time. Absolutely. Mm, it's that paying it forward concept. That's, yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, um, Benny, we want to talk about your, your coaching um, in a more general sense. We want to know sort of what excites you as a coach. You mentioned before, um, this is taken away from a, a business development side, that uh, when a member comes in, it, it should be their, the, the best hour of their day. 
Um, just touching on that sort of stuff, what um, what do you like to see from from the member perspective? Yeah, we um, to create the best hour of their day. It's uh, it's a probably a little bit um, counterintuitive to what most people think they should how they should be coaching. Mm. It, in the early stages of um, learning, it's more about making the re- reward the the learning process rewarding, exciting, engaging, and motivating. It's not so much about improving anything. If you're going to take um, in uh, in Australia, so you guys are surfers, I'm sure. If you're not, <laughs> that's, that's my impression. Of uh, well, I'm not, and that is slightly uh, kicking the balls. <laughs> yeah, so, so, okay, so if you're boxing kangaroos. Yeah, and that's what I do. That's what I do. I can't believe you just made him cooler than yeah. me, Ben. You, you've, you've totally screwed me over so, there. If you're, if you're trying to teach someone how to surf, you want to make that first experience. You want to make them out on a nice, mellow day where you're going to have some success and they're, you're just going to go out and like sit in the sun and catch a wave here or there, really enjoy it, not overcoach them, and make sure it's like this amazing experience. You're not going to bring them out on this day with this huge you know, swell and this wind is cranking and it's super crowded mm. and the locals are pissed off that you're there. It's, you want to set people up for success. It's the same thing in the gym. It's not about teaching people how to get back on their heels and squat with their knees out. It's not about the lumbar curve or neutral head. It's about making sure that they really enjoy the process. Mm. If you, people enjoy the process, they're going to come back on day two, three, four, five, and hopefully for a lifetime. And you have a lifetime to get these people fitter. Mm. I don't remember what your question was, but no, that's, no. Yeah, no, that's I think, uh, that's actually a- I think you, you went somewhere else <laughs> yeah. than what our question actually was. But yeah. Tommy has a good uh, a good um, he has a good way of telling a story within a question that ends up in another story. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in answer to your question, yes, I am a uh, kangaroo kickboxing fighter. So, that's right. Yeah. You're a kangaroo kickboxer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I, uh, so, what about Ben? In, in terms of um, terms of what you just said, that was more along the lines of um, of of uh, of in the broader sense of um, getting people through the door. So, to get that that um, culture and that experience that, that you want to provide those guys. Oh, have you ever, um, have you ever, do you fire members? How do you control your member base? And is that something that you, you go through or that you actively think about or, or, or go through to make sure you got that good environment for the new guys coming in? Yeah. So um, a couple of things there. First off is just creating that good environment. Most people think that because they're opening up a CrossFit gym, they're going to have a strong community and it's true. They will have, a stronger community than a Globo gym. But by default, you don't have a great community just because you're a CrossFit gym. What we do is we do a, f- a number of things, but one of them is we don't just do thrusters and pull-ups and running and talk about you know good nutrition. We talk about in our gym about what does it mean to actually be happy? Like what is what are we trying to pursue here? We're, it's, and it's not what most people think. Most people believe happiness is on the other side of achieving a goal. We've been told since we were really little that if you work hard in school, you get to go to a good college. You go to a good college, you get a good job. If you get a good job, you make a lot of money. If you make a lot of money, you marry the pretty girl and you get the house in the mountains and you get to buy a boat and you're happy. And that's just, that's not what happens. Mm. Even if you get the pretty girl, the, the house and the boat, it doesn't create happiness. What we try and do in our gym is allow people the the tools to recognize what happiness is a result of. And it's a bunch of other things other than that. And there's um, really like three major factors that are contributed to happiness. It's flexing your gratitude muscles, the way I term it. It's, it's recognizing the abundance in your life and being grateful for what you have. It's this kind of giving thanks and seeing what's around you in this, you know, people that um, are, are thankful for what they have and this generally positive attitudes are generally more happy people. So we tell that in terms of like you're flexing your gratitude muscles is say every day, say three things that you're happy for. Myself, Whether and, uh, that's- just, on a, just on a personal mm-hmm. note, Ben, myself and Tommy flex our gratitude muscles in that exact way every morning. Yep. And um, I've just got my my partner, she's just started uh, doing it as well. To I, I couldn't agree more with just getting that um, positive start to the day. Yep. Five Love things it. you're grateful for every day. Love it. And whether that's the beginning of the day, you do it in the shower, you do it while looking and you're brushing your teeth or it's, you know, before, um, while you're saying grace before uh, dinner or you say it before you go to bed or it's a time that you carve out in the middle of the day. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. 
The second thing that people that create happiness is giving back. And it's what most people think is, yeah, so I gave to charity last week. And that's really nice. And doing that can probably affect a lot of people and change lives, but it doesn't change your life. You giving money doesn't affect your happiness. And the reason is because it's a, it's a renewable resource. Mm -hmm. You give money, you make more money. It comes right back. You have to give up something that's not renewable. And that's time. Yep. It's the equivalent of if you guys got on the phone today and you're like, hey, you know, I just donated ten thousand dollars to this charity. I'd be like, wow, that's really cool. Good for you. <laughs> if you guys were like, hey, I just donated the last ten days of my life to helping out at this charity, I'd be like, wow. And you would feel the difference as well. Mm -hmm. So it's giving time, not just money. And the third thing is relationships. And there's a lot of really rock solid, huge studies done on this in terms of living longer, healthier, more productive lives and pushing off the nursing home and all the rest. The best thing for us is not constantly varied function movements performed at high intensity. It's not eating clean. It's not fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, little starch, no sugar. It is having really deep, meaningful relationships in your lives. It's not the amount of them. It's how deep are those? Can you express your fears and share um, true love with people and the people that have that in their lives are obviously happier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. to, to answer the other question you asked about, oh, do we fire members? And we do, we have fired members. We have, um, we have set up in our, um, in our business, we call it a, um, it's, um, it's from EOS business model, which is on entrepreneurs organizational system. We have what we call a VTO, which is a vision traction organizer. And a piece of that vision traction organizer, it's basically how you are setting up your business. And the way we set it up, one of the components is who is your target market? And when I first started in this business, the target market for me was anybody that wants to get fit. And, mm -hmm. and if you wanted to narrow it down, it would have been anybody that's willing to work hard to get fit, the knowing that there's no shortcuts. That's kind of what CrossFit's all about. Yep. And over the years, that definition of our target market has changed drastically to the tune of now it's not about people that just necessarily want to get fit it's not even people that want to work hard what we're looking for our target market is people with high integrity so if you are stealing cheating on your taxes or cheating on your wife you are not going to be a member of our gym it is people that are coachable so if we're trying to give you cues and you don't want to be coached, and there's a lot of people that are members of CrossFit gyms that aren't interested in becoming better from what their coaches are saying. If you're mm -hmm. not coachable, you're not going to belong here. And the last one is if you're not positive. If you complain, if you whine, if you make excuses, you're not going to be a member of our gym. And we have fired people for each of those categories. Wow. Um, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. I'd never heard of the, the idea of firing a member until just uh, probably – 18 months ago when um, a good friend of mine who owned a gym that had somewhat of a somewhat of a kind of jaded kind of community like really tight mm. but some some clicky little areas mm. here and there and just used to used to put off a lot of new guys uh, guys and girls that were walking through the door and then um, since then they've kind of been weeded out and his gym's just grown in leaps and bounds and every time I walk in the door there everyone's just having so much fun everybody knows each other there's no standoffish kind of vibe to, yep. to, to certain pockets of it. So yeah, awesome, Ben. Um, yeah, the, one, of the, um, the, one of the analogies I like about that, it, it's, it's um, weeding the garden. Yeah. So if you have a bad, if, you know, if you have, you, and you grow a garden, let's say we're trying to grow a really prosperous vegetable garden, but there's weeds in there. The weeds keep your vegetables from growing strong. So you, what you want to do is over time is weed the garden by getting rid of those. Mm. And what happens is over time, anybody that's had a garden knows this, is over time, by the end of that summer, when those vegetables are growing so strong and so fruitful and they're blooming and they're everywhere, there's no, there's no room for the weeds. You don't have to weed anymore. Yeah, that's right. Now, that's awesome. Good stuff. Really so let's um, let's get in a little bit about um, coaching your higher level mm. athletes rather than uh, rather than your regular gym goers. So um, how does it differ? Let's just say on a broad sense, I'm very interested just to see wh what you answer yeah, um, with this right. question. We also want to know how to get the pretty girl. Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my notepad out. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he said there was four things to being happy. Yeah. So pretty girl. Big uh, I can't girl, remember the other house, three. Big boat. Yeah, you got boxing yeah. kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> the boat, the house, and the girl. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, hey, uh, how does different? Uh, how does it differ coaching CrossFit Games athletes to regular everyday individuals? And you can answer this any which way you like. 
Yeah. Um, on the baseline level, there's not that much difference. You're still trying to get people fit. You're still trying to get people mentally tough, you mm-hmm. know, mentally focused and create better human beings. So on a baseline level, there's on a macro sense, there's not that much difference on the micro sense. The biggest difference is, um, the amount of detail that goes into it. So when I'm working with a regular member, I talk to them about their nutrition. I talk about them about their mindset. I talk to them about how to improve their physical performance. And then I have that access to them for that 60 minutes throughout the day. And then I see them three, four, if I'm lucky, five times a week. And from there, a lot of the, a lot of it happens and it's in one hour, in one hour with the other. And when we talk with our games athletes, it's that stuff, but like times a hundred. So when we talk about the mindset, we are, um, we are dialing that in. We talk about it all the time. And there's so many components to that. We are dialing everything in terms of so one example I would give is um, with our regular members, we might talk about how to overcome um, a, a struggle, an adversity, a thing that's plaguing you, whether it's you're going through a divorce or you got laid off from your work or an injury. When we go through with this with our, our – um, and I'll help them walk them through that. When we do this with our members, I'm going to start with my elite athletes, we preemptively do that. We say most likely throughout your life you're going to face these adversities. So what we do is – I had my athletes write down that let's write down everything that can possibly go wrong at the CrossFit games. Mm-hmm. And they came up with 101 things that could possibly go wrong. And what we did is we walked through each one of those scenarios and talked about if this comes up, what are we going to do? And what happens is when that happens is one of those things pops up. It's like, Hey, we plan for this. We know exactly how to do it. Mm, interesting. So it's in much, much greater detail and much more foresight. When we talk about nutrition with our regular members, it's eat meat and vegetables, nuts, seed, little starch, no sugar. Maybe we'll talk about like a zone or macros or something like that. When we do it with the games athletes, we're doing blood tests. We're weighing and measuring everything. We are working on meal timing and supplementation. So it's a much more dialed in thing. We're doing sweat tests to see how much they sweat and what their sweat concentrations are. We're playing with different um, – um, um, hydration, um, protocols, it's much more dialed in. And mm-hmm. then the same thing goes wow. for obviously the fitness side of things, right? The fitness side is for a regular member. It's like when you're doing a thruster, let's get the bar to rest on your shoulder. When we do this for a games athlete. We're looking for what we call third wave adaptation. This is a Greg Glassman thing, but second wave adaptation is a fitness that's going to be transferable to another endeavor. So what that means is for our regular members, the reason we want them to doing snatches, thrusters, box jumps, and running is because we believe that's going to make them better at climbing mountains, mm, every day life. You know, gotcha. um, playing, playing basketball on the weekends, going skiing, yep. and re- maybe having to rescue someone from a burning building. With, our, with our, our competitors, we're looking for third wave adaptation. And that is peaking out the adaptation in that specific endeavor. So we want to create the best thrusterer that we can possibly make. We want to create the best toes to bar athlete that we can possibly make. We want to create the most efficient way to do bar facing burpees that we can possibly make Mm -hmm. for our regular members. If it doesn't transfer to something outside of the gym, it doesn't really matter. Like I don't, I could care less if people can do butterfly pull-ups in my gym But for our games athletes. If every, you know, we'll, we'll go on the nuances in like the minute details in videotape butterfly pull-ups. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Hey, um, sorry to cut you off, Bill. Um, do you focus each on each of those scenarios um, uh, in a balance, or or do you do you do look at one side more than the other, like you know your blood testing and or the training specifically? Yeah, um, it's yeah. um it's a good question. It's um it's athlete dependent. So I have different relationships with all my athletes. So for someone like Katrin, um, we look at everything, and Katrin's um Katrin's the best I've ever seen as in terms of like dialing in the process, which is to me is. Like the every single minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day that leads up to the actual events. Um, and for her, I mean, in, I'm incredibly involved in the process. Um, for someone like Matt Fraser, I'm I'm not as involved in that, and Matt's not um, Matt's not as um, um, 360 degree approach. Mm. Matt's Matt's um, the reason he's as good as he is is his willingness to suffer. I, he just he is incredibly self-analytical for the movements, and he is great at pulling out his own weaknesses. 
and incredible at uh, dissecting movement of other athletes and figuring out the best way to do it and then hammering that weakness until it's no longer weakness but a strength. So mm. he's um, he's more of a, a movement type guy, less in the process. He's more process oriented than he was in past years for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Cole, I'm, um, I'm somewhere in between only because of the proximity to where he is. He's on the West Coast. When he's here, we are very much ingrained in the process. And then Brooke Wells is my newest athlete. And uh, we have not started this process yet. I'm just on the programming side of her. Um, I, her first indoctrination into this process side of things is going to be uh, next weekend when she comes to visit us. Right. Okay. Okay. So how much time do you actually, if, you, if you've got a couple of movements that you're, uh, say, the butterfly pull-up, how does it actually work? So you would film um, butterfly pull-ups of said athlete you would go down, uh, put it on a video, sit down and slow motion, break it down. Then you would go out and, and, and break down the reps or, or how, like say you've got something, say Katrin, for example, um, she really, really sucked at butterfly pull-ups. Uh, it was a glaring weakness. How would you actually address that in like how much time day to day? Would you address it once or twice a week for a video session and, a, and an out there session or you put it into the programming more than most or how do you actually, what's a, what's a, what's it look like to actually address that weakness programming yeah. wise and time wise? Yep. So it depends a little bit on the movement um, and that's not like a cop out answer, but it really does. If it's deadlifts, you can only do deadlifts so many times a week, that's right? That's right, for sure. If it's, um, if it's a, um, just holding a handstand or you suck at the bike, those things don't create the same wear and tear and central nervous system, um, fatigue that like a deadlift does. Yep. Yep. So it's a little bit movement dependent. It's also a little bit athlete dependent. It's, um, how do they respond to training their weaknesses? Some people like Matt are phenomenal at it. Other athletes, you ask them to train their weakness and just beating them down and they can't take it mentally. Mm. So it's a little bit athlete dependent as well. Now, to kind of give a general approach to like say your example of um, Katrin with um, muscle with uh, chest of our pull-ups, um, in that scenario, we would film it probably I, – I would recognize it like, ooh, that doesn't look like it's supposed to. Probably in a workout, it would pop up. I would film it in the workout. And then we review the film um, that day right then. And I'd ask her after the workout to practice some more. And we play with some different techniques right then and there. Then depending upon that, I might – we might have fixed it right then. It might just be a technique thing that we need to fix. Mm-hmm. It might be a thing like you're bending your knees too much or you're lifting your head too much, whatever it is. Um, it might be a thing that you're too circular. You need to get some more vertical or you're pulling too late, whatever. The things that we need to work on. So it could be a quick fix and it could be done. It might be a type of thing where – we need to work on for the next three or four days and it's done. Or it might be something like with Katrin, like rope climbs that we work on on a weekly basis almost every other day for the entire season. Mm-hmm. Okay. So does this all go through you? Like do you have – or do you have a specialist for gymnastics and a specialist for um, weightlifting and, or, or do you do the bulk of the athlete movement adjustments? Yeah. Um, I'm like, so, um, I'm the head coach, but I definitely have experts in the field that I rely on. I am, I'm, I'm, I've developed myself into a, um, fair, fairly competent CrossFit coach. Mm -hmm. I pale in comparison to Chris Hinshaw. Specialist coaches. Yeah. Chris Hinshaw. So we use Chris Hinshaw Mm -hmm. in the aerobic capacity, um, in terms of, um, swim, bike and run. He's the guy to go to and I default essentially everything to him in that arena, almost yep. to the programming down to the day-to-day. Gotcha. Um, in terms of weightlifting, we work with Beantown Barbell, um, Fred Calori and uh, Andy Tish, who Andy Tish is uh, Matt Fraser's former Olympic lifting coach when Matt was uh, competing um, in Colorado Springs on the Olympic development team. Mm-hmm. Um, he's our Olympic guy. And then um, on the gymnastics side, I'm lucky enough to have two – gymnastics uh, coaches in my gym, um, Eamon Coyne and Dan Melzar, as well as I, um, I work the Power Monkey camps with uh, Dave Durante. So they're kind of my sounding boards for the gymnastics side of things. Yeah, gotcha. I, hey, um, I, I imagine you'd be a great jack of all trades, but uh, I think these days- of all trades. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I had Jack in my mind because oh, yeah, um, that's, right. cause no, that's the ben. saying, you idiot. Oh, right, okay, with you. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's good to see that you got the uh, the specialist in as well. That's kind of how it is these days. I, was, I, I thought that might have uh, been your answer. Sorry, Tom, I didn't cut you off for you, son. Um, ben, this is a relatively weird question. It may sound weird, but I'm, I'm really, really <laughs> fascinated by it. Um, the sacrifice 
of these athletes is insane. I, like, from what I've heard, and I've read a few books on different other sports and all this sort of stuff, I've never really heard of so much training and, and so much mental prep, and especially with what you do with your athletes. How happy do you think these these people are on a day-to-day basis in terms of, you know, just living a, a balanced lifestyle? Yeah, it's a, um, I love that question. It's um, My answer to that is balance is overrated. Mm. They're not trying to live a balanced lifestyle. If you want to be really good at something, you can have a balanced lifestyle. You can make it to the games and still be a dad and still have be a coach and affiliate owner and – maybe work on level one seminars on the weekends. Mm. You can't win the games and do that. Mm-hmm. If you want to win the games, if you want to be exceptional at something, it, everything else goes away. Yep. You have to make now, sacrifices. Yeah. And the funny thing about that is um, if, if you were talking to Catherine about this, she would stop you and say, I don't, I'm not sacrificing <laughs> anything. I love what I'm doing. I love what I do every single day. And I, I would not choose to do anything else ever. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. This is what I choose to do. It's what I want to do and I love to do. I don't, she heard this is her answer is, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything. That mm-hmm. Nothing I do mm-hmm. is a sacrifice. I do this because I love it. It's the reason she's as successful at following the process as she is, is because she loves the process. Mm. She would rather be in the gym. She'd rather be analyzing her blood work. She'd be rather weighing and measuring her food than she would going out on the weekends, going to the movies, um, you know, hanging with the girls and eating, um, you know, something that just like is convenient for her. Mm. It's not a sack. These guys at this level, and I really believe this, that at the, as you climb up the level of what these people are achieving, they'll tell you that they're sacrificing less and less. Yeah. Yep. The regional athletes that don't make it to the games will tell you how much they've sacrificed. Mm. That's interesting. I heard Jason uh, Kalipa talk about it once. He was asked a similar question about um, uh, how how healthy he thinks his level of training is being a CrossFit Games athlete and so forth. And I remember him saying, he said, "Look, this I'm not saying this is particular uh, particularly healthy. Mm. I'm not I'm not coming in to do the day to day general um, general physical preparedness side of things. I'm out to win the CrossFit Games, mm-hmm. which is a whole nother level. And that's kind of I suppose Ben, what you're what you're touching on. It's it's different from the day-to-day athlete and it's different from uh, from somebody who's rather driven at something, giving it a bit of a crack when you invest your whole um, your whole life. You look at people like um, Kobe Bryant. Have you ever seen the Kobe Bryant documentary? Oh, there's a, a lot of Kobe Bryant documentaries, but obviously he's famous for getting up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. and yeah, going, right. shooting, shooting hoops for, for three hours because his stroke was off the night before. You know, these, yeah. are, these are people that are so driven that that's kind of what's got them to the top, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, I love... So Kobe Bryant... Um, is actually one of those guys that, you know, I'm not a Kobe fan, but I'm a fan of this mentality and this, this recognition, this self-realization that he has, which is he'll be, he said like, I'm not a good father. I'm not a good husband. I'm not a good friend. Those aren't my goals. My goal is to be the best basketball player that ever lived. Yeah. Wow. You know, <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's one of those things that you have to realize that like my saying is to be exceptional, meaning world's best, winning a gold medal or winning the CrossFit Games or being the MVP of the NFL, whatever it is, to be the very best at something, to be exceptional, you can only pour your heart into one thing. Mm. Now, you could be good. You could be really good at almost a world-class level. You could make it to the Olympics. You could make it to the CrossFit Games by having um, two passions, maybe your family and the um, – and um, your athletic pursuits. Now you could be not great, not world class, but you could be really good at three things. And that's kind of where I've settled into. I, I try to do a really good job of being a father and a husband and a family guy. I try to run a really good business and I try and be a really good coach. I know that I'm not as good a coach as I could be. To me to be a true world class coach, I would have to give up one of those two other things. Mm. And I'm not willing to do that. In me, what I'm looking for, and there's not a right or a wrong here at all, is it's what works for each person. What I'm looking for is balance across those three things. What Kobe Bryant is looking for is he wants to be the world's greatest at that. That's, I think, what Matt Fraser and Katrin Davis are doing is they've – Katrin left her family and moved to Boston to be here. Now, she again would tell you that's not a sacrifice because she'd rather be here. But there's, there's this single-minded laser-like focus that mm. these people have. 
Now there's that, there's that one, which is exceptional gold medal champion. There's the two focus, which is world class. You can make the Olympics. You can make it to the NFL. You can make it to the games. Focus on two things. Three, you can still be very, very good at three things, which I hope is where I'm chasing towards. Mm -hmm. But my take is a fourth derails everything. So personally, I gave up being an athlete because I knew I couldn't do four things. Yeah, interesting. That's a good way to look well, at it. You have yeah. to just divide yourself on the on the things that you can really excel at. Mm. And it, it just ties in well with what you were saying before about making sure that people enjoy the process, number one, of, of stepping into a CrossFit gym and, it, and everything they do in life because from the sounds of things, and I, and I totally agree with you, you have to have the undying passion for it and then you're going to start to move forward. And if you don't love it, there's just no way you can ever get any good at it. You know? Yeah, it's funny how many people um, – it's really funny how many people um, in all different sports are trying to climb the ranks and trying to really make a name for themselves and try to achieve a lot and don't love it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's weird how people pursue this. Like I, I've had athletes I've coached, which I know – dread every workout, dread every training session, dread training their weaknesses. And they just, they fear it. They don't like it. They're not happy at the end of the day, yet they are, they are gung ho at giving up so many other things in their lives to try and be a games athlete. It's like, why would you do, I don't yeah. just, I, it's weird things. Like, why are you doing that? Mm. Well, Andre Agassi, I'm pretty sure he was famous for saying that he hated most of his professional tennis career. And yet he's one of the best of all time. Well, who said who said uh, that? Andre Agassi. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I had a friend. Uh, I had a friend named John Spall who played um, Australian rules football. Ben, like at the highest level, and um, then he went and came down and played with us at local level. He played for one um, one year, and he was so dominant. Yeah. He was the best guy in the world. I was eighteen when I knew him. He was like twenty eight, thirty. So he was like the man. Anyway, he um, he played one year with us and then retired, and he was getting paid. At a local level, a couple of thousand dollars a game or something yep. like that. So for me, good. for me as an 18 year old kid, yeah. I thought that was incredible. He was a millionaire. And yeah, and um, I spoke to his mates the, the next year, the guys that I played with, and they said, I said, Where's John? Where's Spoolie? Why isn't he coming back? Why isn't he coming back? And they just looked at me and said, He doesn't like footy, mate. Yeah. He doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. So, and that was because for him, it was the whole thing was he was so talented that. He, it drove him to an AFL career. Mm. He could have been the best player in the AFL, but yeah. he wasn't passionate enough. So it's just a means to an end for him. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And it was like it was more of a financial for him. It was a financial thing. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm playing AFL football. I'm getting paid, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. Um, so one of the things, um, it, it's really interesting. One of the things I, I one of my tenets of um, happiness, and one of the things that you should like, what what you should invest your time into, is if you think of like three concentric circles. One of those circles is what are you talented at? What are you good at? And he was obviously an incredibly talented athlete. From there, the next one is what do you, where is there opportunity? Where can you make money, right? Like where is, where is somebody going to pay you to do this? And the third one is what do you enjoy? And it's only when those three things line up that you should actually pursue that. Mm. It's like, you know, now most people are like, well, if you, you know, the saying is if you love it, if you love it, you'll, you'll find a way to make money at it. And that's, I think it's misguided. There's gotta be an opportunity just because you love CrossFit. If you're not a talented CrossFitter, you, there's no sense in committing your life to this thing. It's mm. like, it just doesn't work. The same thing is like, there has to be an opportunity there. You might be the most talented ant farmer, like crazy <laughs> little, ants, right? The most talented <laughs> ant farmer in the world. And you love it. You love ants. Dude, that's I, you're. It's not something you should commit your life <laughs> yeah. to. Well, Ben, in saying that, you've never been to the international ant farming convention in Melbourne uh, every. Yeah, <laughs> is there one? <laughs> no, 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 no it's not, not at all. <laughs> of course, there's not. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. I'm going to tell that story to, to someone one time, and then you'll be like, "I'm an ant farmer." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. you, fuck you, uh, I'm an ant farmer. Fuck you, Ben. I have devoted my life to ants. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons why Bill and I started the show. Bill's love of, of podcasts, but also. We, when Bill and I met, we just found ourselves talking absolute shit to each other for about <laughs> 70 hours straight. And we're like, yeah. hey, let's just do something with this. And we love meeting new people. And uh, yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. So, um, so Ben, you've, uh, how long have we got with you now? We can take this little part out, but um, have you got, we got, you got to get right out of here in about 10 minutes, right? Yeah, I got, I got about 10 minutes. Yep. yep. All right, cool. Um, all righty. So, Ben, I want to ask you um, before, we, before we wrap it up, we know you've got to get out of here. Um, Tell us a story about um, 
how it felt to watch um, Katrin, mm. for example, last year come back after missing the games and uh, and win the games, or even Matt this year, if it's a similar, I mean, I mean, very similar, coming from second to win first. How's it feel to see your athletes up there on the on the top of the podium? Yeah, it um. It, it, it feels obviously it feels it's a great feeling. It's what you work really hard for all year long. It's what you hope the outcome is at the end. Um, and it's amazing. And there's, you know, lots of hugs, smiles and laughing and, you know, you get to reminisce about it for a long time, but it's, um, it's probably not what people imagine it to be. It's not, um, you know, popping champagne bottles and, you know, eating cake and get the the you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, going on a cruise and stuff like it just, it doesn't bring the same, you know, so here's what it does. It does not bring the same level of happiness as you project it will. And yeah. there's a reason for that. It's because happiness is not on the other side of success. Just like we talked about achieving goals doesn't make you happy. They're, your passion for the process and your love for the process will make you happy. So that's the first side of that. The next, it's just, uh, what it does though is it kind of, it, it justifies everything. Mm-hmm. It justifies mm. the, the, the approach you took. It justifies the amount of detail and focus you put on things that other people might seemingly laugh at, right? Like we work on breathing techniques. And I know we've had a lot of athletes come through the doors, that games athletes, and they see me working with catcher on that and they're like, ah, whatever and they kind of laugh it off yep it just goes to show like all these little fine details that we're working on matter Mm -hmm. and they're producing what we want to produce which is the world's greatest athlete in the sport of fitness absolutely so in terms of happiness it's lower on the scale than you might think um but in terms of gratification and um um, this kind of like justifying the, the, the commitments you put towards things. It's that part's incredible. That mm. part feels really, really special. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, it's much more like a, a goal achieved in that, in that sense. And I, I feel like if it was, if it was, you know, champagne and, and visiting the ant farm and going on a boat cruise <laughs> and all that sort of stuff, it, it'd be, um, yeah, we, we actually, we took Catherine's prize money and bought an ant <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. In Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's down here on the, just visiting the ants at the moment. A couple of bull ants down there. <laughs> um, no, look, I feel it was, if it was all that sort of stuff, it, it would seem like there, that was an end point and you wouldn't want to keep pursuing and, and getting more athletes better. Yep, that's exactly right. All right, um, Ben, before we, before we wrap it up, um, we want to quickly ask you six questions. We've got a little thing, six from six. It's going to be, have to be pretty rapid fire. We've got to get you out of here. So there's going to be three questions from me, three questions from Tommy, and then we'll, uh, we'll do a couple of plugs, whatever you need to plug, and then we'll get you out of here. So Great. my questions are, um, first question is, favorite uh, place on the planet, travel destination, your, um, your favorite place to spend some downtime, go on holidays. All right. So um, favorite downtime for um, spend holidays is Cape Cod. Um, it's super easy. It's only an hour and a half from my house. It's where I grew up on my summers. It's my, um, it's where I feel the most comfortable. Cool. Um, I love Cape Cod. Having said that, the best vacation I've ever took taken was Hawaii. Nice. Nice one. All right. So similar vein, this time, uh, a place you haven't been. So dream destination, Australia. Boom. There you go. That's good. You'll have to come over yeah. in September for the, uh, next September for the, for I'm, the convention. I'm, I'm for real. Like Australia is a place that's on my bucket list. It's where I want to go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll, uh, we'll all go out to dinner and get some Mexican food and <laughs> speak about ants. Yeah. Mexican jumping ants. <laughs> Mexican jumping ants. <laughs> we should. Um, <laughs> um, ben, lastly for me, um, this is the first time I've asked this question. I'm going to change it. Um, any books that you would recommend to people? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes. Yes. Um, book that changed my life. I read it or two books that changed my life early on when I read them early in opening up my CrossFit career were seven, seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. How good. Cool. That's awesome. I've got that. That's, uh, uh, that's ne- in my audible ready to go. Yep. Um, the next one was how to win friends and influence people oh, in terms of, yep. in terms of by Dale Carnegie, in terms of running a CrossFit gym. I think those are two of the best, um, in terms of coaching, um, in terms of the mindset, it would be, um, um, a champion's mind. Um, I'm blanking on the name, uh, Bob Rutella. That's, yeah. that's phenomenal as is, um, the, uh, there's another one that's almost the exact same title. It's a, uh, like a champion's mind and the mind of a champion or something like that. I um, think, um, I'm blanking on the name of the other one. Sure. Cool. I think, um, 
Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. When I um, I listened to that about uh, three months ago, and as soon as I finished listening to it, I said to myself, I need to listen to this every six months of my life. Mm. Just, yeah. to, just, to, just to refresh and remember the little things that can help yep. influence everybody around you, you know? Um, it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, basically, it's, um, it's a tenant of being a leader. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Ben, uh, first question. What do you like to do in your downtime, in your spare time? Uh, I like to hang with my family. I am um, one of my favorite things to do is to come home um, from work, take my shoes off, and sit in the backyard with the kids, and uh, basically water the grass, water the plants, kind of decompress with the mm. kids running around at my feet. Beautiful, awesome. beautiful. Um, big inspiration growing up. Big, uh, big role model. Favorite role model. Something like that. Um, my father. Um, really successful business guy. Um, and he's kind of st- still to this day is kind of the person I use as my sounding board for all major decisions I make. And, uh, the second one would be Greg Glassman in mm. terms of, uh, his ethos, um, towards business. It's completely counter to my dad, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, and finally, my friend, if you could invite three people dead or alive to a dinner, uh, who would they be and why? And you can't say uh, your family's already there and Greg Glassman's already there as well. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is a big dinner table. <laughs> All right. I would invite um, Jesus. Yep. I am, not, I am not religious and I have so many questions. I would love to be religious. I would love to believe. And if he was at dinner, I think I would start to believe. Mm. So um, Jesus – um, um, it Bill is a tough one. Belichick, Bill, uh, Bill Belichick. no, actually it's, I'll scratch. I want a coaching one. I'm going to go John Wooden. Okay. John Wooden. Yep. Yep. Cool. UCLA coach, yep. um, successful coach, you know, um, coach of the coach of the century. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. and then I will go, um, uh, it would be another good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on the spot here. <laughs> yeah. Tom I'll, invite from Adventure guys. Radio. I'll bring you guys to dinner. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. You're going to have cool. to sit on my lap. <laughs> yeah. I'll sit on your lap. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> uh, all righty. Cool. Um, well, Ben, we'll, uh, we'll get you out of here. Let's um, go to anything you would like to plug. Where can people find you? Social medias, um, websites. Yeah. I've created um, kind of a, a hub for the things I'm doing. So I, um, it's called builtbybergeron.com. Um, some really cool, exciting things on there in terms of like uh, the affiliate excellence stuff and how to run great affiliates. There's a blog on there with some uh, some posts about things like that. That's where you can also find um, things like our competitor training program, which is free. Um, 30,000 people a day follow that. Mm. And then there's also um, a new thing that we put out earlier this year called Competitors Training for Masters, which is a subscription-based um, service. And it's for masters, CrossFit Games athletes, or masters athletes that are looking for a little more than just like the daily workout, some supplemental work. And that has uh, been kind of our, our, our love and our passion as of the last um, probably four or five months. We just relaunched the new site this past Monday, and it is uh, being received with amazing praise, and I'm incredibly proud of it. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Good stuff. Well, thanks so much for your time, Ben. And um – yeah, that's it from us. Yeah, thanks very much, awesome, my friends. Cool. Thanks. Let's uh, throw another shrimp on the Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that right now on Bill's lap. Uh, <laughs> At six in the morning, that's impressive. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. All righty, guys. That was the show. Um, hope you liked it. If you like the show, make sure you uh, help us out, help us grow the show by subscribing and or leaving us a rating review on iTunes. One of the two, subscribe. Let's subscribe. Let's get mm-hmm. some subscribers. Um, Anything in that show that you guys want, like the book uh, references or anything that Ben or or myself and Tommy spoke about, then that'll be in the show notes at www.pod... Damn it. (laughs) www.adventuretravel.com forward slash podcast. Um, Join the mailing list there. You won't miss any of our shows, any of our trip updates, promotions through Adventure Travel there. And um, don't forget to head to True Pride, www.truepride.com.au forward slash ADVF. Get your joining fee waived if you book through their website. Get your budget sorted. Save yourself $600 a month and carve 10 free hours. Get your life back. Get yourself a VA. Head to www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF to 
speak with those guys. Excellent. Bill, you've done very well. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> See you next week. Discovery Roger, go for deploy.